Now, if you're tired of buying perfumes that go unused or you want to make sure you're picking the perfect fragrance for your loved ones, then listen closely to this next segment. Here with the things you should know before you buy another fragrance is Karina Waldron. <laughs> Karina, we need to be informed, right? Yes, we do. Before purchasing your next fragrance, there are a few things you want to take into consideration. So you're getting something that you actually connect with. Yes. Yeah, and get your money's worth, obviously. Absolutely. So concentration. I think this is a really good category to look at because it's going to tell you how long your fragrance is going to last. Okay. Whether it's going to be all day or just a few hours. Mm -hmm. So perfume is like the highest concentration, meaning the level of oil that's in the formula. Okay. And that, not a lot of brands have it because it's quite expensive to make and even purchase. Yeah. And then we have Eau de Parfum, which is known for all the brands. And last but not least is Eau de Toilette, which is very minimal in terms of the oil concentration. So this is going to be on your skin for a few hours. It's going to be light. Very it's light. It's going to be airy, but the parfum is the thing that is probably going to cost the most as well, right? Definitely, definitely. Okay. But it's going to last you hours. For sure. I yeah. like the I like the majorly concentrated. So yep. let's go into the types. Yes. So fragrance types. This is a category that I think you should focus more on because it's going to make it easier for you to purchase your next fragrance because you'll okay. know exactly what you like. So there are different categories there is the floral category which is my mm. personal favorite yes because floral is like very feminine and yes. it comes in different types you always smell so good thank you thank you I love my florals okay and then we have more of the everyday scents they're gonna be fresh maybe a little musky or even citrusy mm -hmm. great for daytime or even if you work in an office I yeah. would go with something like this and then gourmands mm -hmm. which are fragrances that are gonna be very sweet deeper in tone, mm -hmm. really nice for fall and winter. Okay. And then last but not least is our woody and ambery scents. These are also going to be a lot more deeper, great for like evening wear. Yeah. Some even lean a little bit more masculine, but yeah. they're a little bit more daring. Yeah, it feels like bourbon, whiskey. Yeah. This feels like gin, vodka. Exactly. Like obviously I have a problem, <laughs> but it's like that's, you know, like the lighter and then to the more deeper, which is nice. Yep. What else should we need to know about our fragrances or what else do we should we know? So once you know the category that you're into, look at yeah. the notes. The okay. notes are really going to describe what you're going to smell. All right. So fragrances are composed of top notes, which is yeah. what you're going to smell initially when you first spray it. Mm -hmm. And then we have the mid notes, which is like transitioning to the base notes. Okay. So the base notes is what you're going to smell throughout the entire wear. Yep. So it's really important to spray it on your skin, mm -hmm. let it sit there, even in the hour and yes. then see if you really love it because they definitely develop a lot for sure and they change over time right? exactly let's talk about niche versus designer because oh. there's a difference there's a difference in these two why don't you explain there is us? there's a huge difference and I love that more and more people are getting into niche mm -hmm. it's becoming a little bit more mainstream so designer fragrances are very known mm -hmm. and they're created by brands that do more than just fragrances so they okay. do fashion beauty and all that good stuff mm -hmm. whilst niche they focus only on fragrances they're really oh, into yes. like the artistry behind it the concentration the uniqueness normally they're very complex I want to say the yes. fragrances yes and they last a lot longer mm -hmm. so you are gonna pay a little bit more with niche fragrances okay and but you say get into it absolutely because yeah. they're more unique yes. it, not everyone around is gonna smell like the niche fragrances oh I like that yeah. and you want your individual smell. exactly when you walk in the room people are like ooh, Karina's here <laughs> right Okay, so much great information, Karina, since the last time you were here. Uh, you've been busy. I have. You recently launched your very own fragrance brand. We're so proud of you for that. Amazing. I'm so, happy. so tell us about it. Yes, I recently launched the Illuminar, which means Portu in Portuguese, it means to illuminate. Beautiful. Uh, this is my personal brand. We started off with beautiful candles, their mm. coconut soy, and their non-toxic. But we are more of like a lifestyle brand. There's so much mm. more coming, and these they smell really good. They smell incredible. <laughs> so I'm excited to see where it goes. And I love that you're layering it. You're, you're starting it as a lifestyle brand, which means there's going to be so much more to oh, come. Yeah. And a, a nice nod to your Portuguese heritage as well. Thank that you. That is Thank so lovely. You. Amazing. So we have another launch to talk about as well. Carolina Herrera came out with the newest edition of their popular Bad Boy fragrance. So we caught up with Carolina Herrera Jr. and model Josh Upshaw to find out all about it. Let's take a look. To create a perfume, 
You need a lot of time, you need a great team, a very good nose, and then just a story. Bad boy for me is somebody who's adventurous, cheeky, brooding, fun, a little mischievous, but with a good heart. Bad boy, it wasn't just one boy, one man. It was an idea of a team, you know, like a group of these guys led by our everyman um, bad boy. I just think like living through your heart and experiencing life and not trying to conform to, you know, what society tells you to be or how to be is really, you know, the bad boy. You know, it's funny, I get asked what it was like to grow up, you know, with fashion and my mother and all these icons around. And looking back, I'm like, wow, but when you're living it, it's your mother, it's your mother's friends, it's like normal. You don't really know who you're with until you're older and you realize, wow, that was... I don't know, Halston, or that was Andy Warhol, or that, you know, or that was Bianca Jagger. You don't know, they're your mother's friends. Looking back though, I think it, it must have been super enriching and super fun to see such different characters at home. And for me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something I always say, which is, and I actually didn't come up with this, you know, Carolina mom did, but she always says that it's the most important invisible accessory a person can have. And it's a mixture of how you want to feel and how you want to make people feel. 